In today's video, we're talking about the lens correction feature inside of Lightroom. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And it's good to be making a video. I haven't made any videos for a while because it's been really busy. I've been completely booked out, which is great. Uh, but I really do miss making videos. And today I wanted to make a very, very quick one because I was talking to someone yesterday that um, there's someone that they, they shoot a lot. They've done photography for a really long time, but they've never heard of the lens correction feature inside of Lightroom. And when I showed it to him, he was sort of gobsmacked because he hadn't seen this before or he'd seen it, but he's never actually clicked on it. And I just wanted to cover off what that does and how you can use it to enhance your photo edits. So if you're not familiar with the lens correction feature inside of Lightroom, what it does is it tries to correct imperfections uh, in lenses. And the way that it does this is that there is a database of lenses that Adobe has from different manufacturers, and it knows what those imperfections are um, as an overall, okay? so. Uh, it knows that a particular lens may cause a bit of a warping effect. And so what it does, it tries to counter that by artificially uh, just changing the image and correcting those, um, those imperfections. So you're gonna see this in two different things or, or two main imperfections. The first one is a warping effect. So like a, a fisheye effect that you get sometimes. And the, so this feature will allow you to correct that. And the second one is that uh, a bit of a vignetting effect that sometimes can occur, particularly with wide, le wide angle lenses. Um, if you think about a lens, uh, a lens is round. And so the image that is projected through the lens onto the sensor, uh, it doesn't match up because the sensor is not round, the sensor is rectangular. And sometimes it clips the edges a little bit. So you get these sort of dark edges. Um, uh, sometimes, particularly, like I said, with the with the um, wide angle lenses. So that's another thing that it tries to correct. So let's jump into Lightroom and I'll show you how to do this, whether it's a lens that Adobe knows about. And if it doesn't know about these lenses, then I'm going to show you a way to get around that as well. OK, and we are inside of Lightroom Classic and uh, you can do this also inside of Lightroom, uh, the CC version of Lightroom, the Creative Cloud version. Uh, it just looks a little bit different, but the functionality is there. I just prefer to use uh, the classic version of Lightroom. And what I have is I've got two photographs here that I'm going to show you. Uh, they're very different photographs. So I've got a, a landscape photograph and then I've got a night scene sort of uh, street photography photo uh, to show you the main, uh, yeah, the main features of this, um, of this module. So uh, let's start off with this one, this one first. And I'm going to go into the develop module. Uh, for this photo and then on the right hand side here where all your tools are I want you to scroll almost to the bottom so I think it's fourth from the bottom uh, you're going to see this module called the lens corrections uh, module and this is where we're going to work now there's a couple of little uh, boxes in here and you've got some settings up here as well profile and manual we'll come to that in a minute but first of all I want you to um, when you click on the profile uh, version here it, this is the more automated way of doing things so this is where we're going to start off and then we'll switch over to manual and i'll show you how that works <clears throat> so um the first thing that we want to do is that uh, we want to uh work on this little checkbox here which is the second one and this is going to enable the, the lens uh, profile corrections now i want you to see what happens when i click on this and pay particular attention to the corners uh, of the photograph and also you're going to see almost like a warping effect the photograph itself as you see it now looks fine okay but you don't realize the things that are wrong with the photo until you click on this box so I'm going to click on this box and here we go now you notice that it's sort of zoomed in around the center of the photograph I'm going to um, I'm just going to keep doing this back and forth so you can see the differences when I click uh, when I check the box and when I uh, disable it okay and uh, there's two things that are happening. Number one, the warping effect is being uh, corrected by Lightroom. Okay, so this is what it should look like. All right. And uh, the other thing that you're going to notice is around the corners. So keep a look at around the sky here, this, the, the left and right corners of the, of the sky. Uh, when I switch uh, off and on, okay, you're going to see that uh, there's actually a bit of a vignette effect going on. So you see this darkening effect, right? And that shouldn't be there. And the reason for that is that, as I was explaining before, the lenses uh, that you put on your camera are, are round. And so what's happening is that it, you're projecting a round image onto a rectangular sensor. And sometimes it just clips the, 
uh, the corners uh, or it may just not have enough light in there. So this is happening on all four corners, by the way. So uh, I don't know. It's not as obvious down the bottom. Uh, you can still see it, though. Uh, but um, but it is happening. So anyway, we're going to enable that. And, we're, and it's going to be automatically done for us. Now, if it doesn't, auto, if it doesn't do it automatically for you, um, as you can see, when I clicked on this box here, it's picked up the lens um, from the metadata of the photograph. It's picked up the lens that I was using for that particular um, that particular photograph. If it doesn't pick it up though, that's okay. You can go into these menus and you can set the the specific brand of lens and uh, and the model as well. Okay, and uh, so you can manually uh, enter that information um, uh, yourself. Now, what if your lens does not appear on the, any of these um, any of these lists? Well you've got these two sliders down the bottom and this is going to allow you to go in and manually uh, correct the image now this is going to take a little bit of gauging uh, from you you're going to have to just eyeball it basically uh, but if you if i move this to the left and right you're going to notice that you get that warping effect it's sort of uh the, it's like the image is breathing okay so uh, you would eyeball it and try to get it roughly around the spot where it would look right and it would be the same thing with the vignetting as well as so you've moved to the left and right here you can see that the corners uh, add more or less light and uh, you don't want to go all the way to the right because it's it, otherwise you get this brighter uh, the, the corners are going to be brighter than they should be so you sort of want to balance it with the rest of the photograph like maybe like uh, something like that for example Okay, so you're just going to have to eyeball it and uh, and uh, and sort of fit those sliders to what you uh, what you like and what you think is correct. So uh, the second thing that I want to show you about the lens correction module is this other little box in here, which is called the uh, which is remove chromatic aberration. And for this, we're going to need a different photograph. So let's move on to this other photograph here. Okay, and this is just a, a night scene. This is where most of the time where you're going to see uh, issues with chromatic aberration. And what it is, is a little bit of a halo, a colored halo around the edges of um, contrasty things. So bright areas against dark areas. Let me show you what I mean. So there's these little lamps uh, on the table here. And um, you may notice that you've got this little sort of red line around it now this is just a, a physics things with a lens um, if you may or may not know but light is made up of different colors and when you've got lenses inside of the um, inside of your or lens components inside of the whole lens so the lens is made up of many components of, of glass in there and sometimes those colors will split up and so when everything focuses sometimes all those colors don't fall on top of one another creating uh, white light instead a little bit of the red or a little bit of the purple may actually um, uh, sort of uh, I guess it sort of it slips out if you like okay so it sort of bleeds out a little bit and that's what causes this little halo things and if you click on the chromatic aberration and pay, pay attention to this red glow around the uh, the light if I click on that it removes most of it. There's still a little bit there, but it removes most of it and it does look a lot better. Once again, I'm just going to keep uh, taking it off and putting it on and hopefully you can see uh, around the edge, particularly on the top here, you can see that it goes away and comes back. And uh, so that is chromatic aberration and that's how you fix it. Now, there, um, one of the, uh, what, in, in some cases, it's not going to fix Every, you know every single every single issue of chromatic aberration and luckily Lightroom gives you the option to manually go in there and control this I'll give you an example of this um, so when I took this shot I mean I can I can tell you for a fact that these little purple halos around there uh, they weren't there this is just pure white light and when I click on the remo the remove chromatic aberration it doesn't really fix it um, it takes a little bit off but it's nowhere near what it needs to do and so what you can do is you can go into the manual setting in here and you can override this and when you go in there you're going to notice that uh, you've got all these different sliders in here and the reason for that is that chromatic aberration can appear in 
uh, in different colors, okay? So what you're going to have to do, particularly purple, as you can see, there is a section in here just for purple, purple hue. And that is one of the colors that typically bleeds out when you're getting uh, chromatic aberration. Um, and, and by the way, chromatic aberration will happen more on the cheaper lenses and, um, and less so on the more professional and higher end lenses. But that's not to say that it doesn't happen. Uh, it pretty much happens on pretty much every single lens that I've ever used. So how do we get rid of this? Um, first of all, if I had a different color to purple, okay, you could use the eyedropper tool and then you can just click on that and click on the particular color that is a problem. In this case, it, purple seems to be the, 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 main, uh, the main problem. And so the purple hue, which is already selected in here, I'm going to slide this slider here, the amount to the right, and you're gonna notice that the purple will start to disappear, okay? So I move that just enough so that it's no longer an issue. And you don't have to go all the way to the right, okay? Because otherwise you're gonna start removing purple from areas that you shouldn't. But you just wanna remove it or slide it just so that you remove just enough of it, okay? There was some down in the water as well, in here as well, I don't know if you saw it. Let me just bring it back to, oh, they're over here. So there's a little bit of purple. Um, and so we move that to the right. And that pretty much has fixed it. Now, if, uh, if there were more um, uh, different colors, like you can see that there's a little bit of orange around this, these lights as well. Uh, you could slide this to the right and include some of that orange. That's basically what this slider here does. Uh, at the moment, it's, it's affecting, when I move the amount slider, it's affecting everything between this, uh, this marker and this right marker here on the purple hue. And, uh, and so you can expand or, uh, or contract this, this range, if you like. The, the, the smaller the range, the better it is because you, you're, effect, you're affecting um, less colors so that you don't get something um, accidentally start removing colors from other things. The other color that is uh, also a problem sometimes with chromatic aberration is green. And this is the slider here that you use to, um, to control the green side of colors. And again, you've got this range in here that you can move. In this particular case, we don't have an issue with, uh, with green, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but um, as you can see now, the light in here, okay, it's picking up a lot of that red in there. So you, we, we could expand that to the right a little bit, okay? And you can see as I, as I move it to the right, it includes that bit of red. So I would probably take it to there. So at the moment, I've got a value of 30 and 87. And that's probably as far as I would push it. I've still got color in the rest of the, the, the photograph and, um, and everything looks fine. And um, so that is uh, pretty much everything inside of the lens correction uh, module. Uh, I would encourage you to go and play around with it. Like I said, I was surprised to learn how many people are not actually using this uh, that are professional photographers and they, they didn't know about this. So uh, hopefully if you hadn't seen this before, that uh, this is helpful. And if you have any questions, again, please don't forget to leave them in the comment section. So I hope you were able to follow along. Uh, if you do have any questions though, the comment section below is probably the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms uh, and you're gonna find all the links in the description. If you did like this video or you learned something or you just found it interesting, please don't forget to give the video a like. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do so. I make videos like this all the time to help you with your photography. So if you don't wanna miss out on any of those, uh, click the subscribe button and the notification bell, and that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. Again, please don't forget to click the like button. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.